What's up everybody, I'm Raph and this is Petunia, the little western hognose snake. Western hognoses have definitely been gaining popularity as far as pets go, so today we're going to talk about the pros and the cons of these beautiful little beasts. So without further ado, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna start out with the cons because we're gonna we're gonna finish on a good note. So the first con is that they can be pretty huffy and puffy. Petunia, it's kind of in between. Like half the time she'll scream and yell at me to get away using hisses. They don't have vocal cords. They actually can hood up, uh, like cobras do, but this is not a cobra, obviously. But just something to make themselves look bigger because, as you can see, it's not a very big animal. A lot of things can eat this. Now, this could be a con for, let's say, a new keeper that's just getting into snakes and they wanted their first snake. But they get this adorable little western hognose snake and every time they open the enclosure it just goes on full defense mode. Bluff striking, they really won't bite defensively but they will strike at you to kind of scare whatever it is away, right? That's one of their defense mechanisms. And it can be nerve wracking. But just know that it really is all for show. And, you know, they'll get over it, you'll get over it. Everyone will have a good time. Now I said they really won't bite defensively. It's one of their last resorts, but they love food, right? So you may find yourself on the receiving end of a food bite, which is actually what happened. Uh, Petunia was at a place where reptiles were shown off before I took her and I worked there for a little while and she bit me one time in front of these little kids and their grandparents and they were all freaking out they were like oh my god she bit you yeah she bit me but it was my fault so I took her out of the enclosure she probably hadn't eaten for well it, it had been longer than she wanted it to be really it wasn't too long but not too short either so I pulled her out with one hand after she was all huffy and puffy and crazy and then I went to put her onto this hand, but I fed her my finger, right? So that's my fault. Uh, the thing about this, and this brings us to our next con, is that they're rear fanged venomous. This isn't like a deadly venomous snake that I'm sitting here just free handling. What it is, and all venom is just modified saliva. It's a modified saliva that's built to kill things like toads over time. So if you are a three inch toad, I would not recommend getting a Western hognose snake. But it's nothing that's gonna cause any kind of real damage to you. Even if it did, being that they're rear fang venomous, it takes time. It's not a hypodermic needle like cobras or, or lapids in general or vipers or things like that. She was actually on me for like a good three minutes, just kind of chewing, because I wasn't gonna start yanking on her, especially in front of the kids. You gotta play it cool, you know? So it's worth noting that if you are hypersensitive to things like bee venom and whatnot, you may also be hypersensitive to their venom. But even with that being the case, they've never killed anybody, okay? Look at this, look at this little noodle. The worst I ever heard of it was like somebody's arm swelled up a little bit, like the whole arm, but that was, that was it. So pretty safe, right? Anything can be dangerous, I, I suppose. So pretty darn safe, even with that said. Big con here. This is my biggest con, all right? They make really nasty poops, okay? I have a lot of animals in this room. Other than the turtles, uh, Leroy, my Greek tortoise, and Bubbles, my box turtle, these are the worst poops in the room, bar none. And they're a lot smaller than a lot of the other poops in the room, but they are just vile, okay? But, you know, a lot of people say like, oh, your reptile room must stink or whatever. If you clean the poop, the poop's not in there anymore and then it doesn't stink anymore. But being that these snakes have faster metabolisms and things like ball pythons, you're gonna be cleaning that poop more often, right? As long as you stay on it, it's not the biggest deal, but you know, once or twice a week, Petunia poops pretty much twice a week, like clockwork, twice per meal she'll poop. And uh, if you stay up on it, it's not that big of a deal, but if you are really averse to, you know, slime, that they just kick around all up in the dirt, use a loose substrate, because they like to dig anyway, but that's for later on. So poops, poops can be nasty. If you really don't like poops, maybe not the snake for you. Another con we'll talk about is some aspects of handling. I love handling the snake, but the cons I'm talking about are they're pretty small. Males will be even smaller than this. So potentially pretty fragile, right? Like, you know, if you make a quick move or if I bumped her on the table that I'm sitting in front of, 
it could cause more damage than it would to a bigger snake. Now, I'm, pr I'm pretty careful with my snakes, and you probably would be too, so that might not be a big issue, but they are also terrible at holding on. She's found a way to wedge herself right now between my fingers, but if I were to just do this, and then just, you know, that's not a python, that's not even a corn snake that can hold on and keep themselves perched on something, not these guys, okay? So you have to make sure you always have positive control underneath the animal, ideally. So you have to be more conscious of you holding them compared to something like a ball python that can just like, yep, yeah, there you go. Something like a ball python that can just wrap around your arm and you could just forget about it. And as far as getting one goes, the last big con of the Western hognose snake is even the, the normal phase or normal morph, how they look in the wild, uh, it's still pretty dang expensive because even though supply started going up, uh, demand started going up right along with that supply. So it's still, uh, I think I saw like, maybe like $300 still for a normal uh, here in the US. They're not, it's an animal, right? It's part of my family and I didn't have to pay a dang thing for Petunia and she's a pretty fancy morph. So that was pretty cool. But you know, if it's gonna be part of your family and you're really committed to getting it, it's of course, it's not a crazy price tag, but uh, you know, something to consider where you could get a normal ball python for like 60 bucks. But then again, you're gonna have to put more into the care, more into the enclosure size, all that stuff. So. Yeah. Now on to the pros, because you're not all bad, right, Petunia? And most of these are going to be the flip side of some of these cons. So first of all, it's a venomous snake that you can own safely and not have to jump through a bunch of hoops or really make sure you keep on lockdown. No, you could be supreme edgelord among all your friends. Well, I have a venomous snake. Who's, who's, who's the real one now? Okay, that was really stupid. But a big pro for sure is just in general uniqueness. Okay, we'll talk about the look. How do they look? Number one, they have a keeled scale, which uh, each of these scales has a keel in it, which is basically just a ridge that goes right down the middle. And, you know, not most snakes have that. Some, some other snakes have that, of course, but it's not the most common thing you see in snakes. So that's pretty cool. They have a different, they have like a dragon kind of texture to them, which is fun. And then, of course that nose, right? They're called hognose snakes for a reason. And that reason brings us right into the second half of the uniqueness where it's their behavior, right? Not too many common snakes in the pet trade are burrowers. That's what that little nose is for. That's a little shovel. That's her little shovel face. Whereas ball pythons might hide for an extended period of time, especially while you're awake mostly, right? Cause they're nocturnal. And uh, even corn snakes, which might move around a little more than a ball python. They're doing kind of regular things like climbing brush and, and traversing along the ground. These guys burrow, okay? And now you're like, Raph, Kenyan sand boas burrow. They do it all the time. They just hang out under the sand. That's the fun thing. She, like all day, she is actively digging tunnels across the enclosure. And it's just, it's really fun to watch because it's unique, you know? She'll pop out. She has got a little dirt hat on top of her head and then she'll go right back in, or she hangs out outside for a little while. And to boot, she's diurnal, right? So she's gonna be doing it during the daytime, which is, I mean, I guess it depends on your schedule, right? But most of us aren't up all night, we're up all day. So you get to watch your snake move around, do funny things, wear little dirt hats. She's also really cute. Most snakes, when they drink water, they'll just stick their the front of their mouth in the water. She shoves her whole head in there and you just see her gulping. Pretty funny stuff. So uh, yeah, just really unique behavior and that's a big pro the Western Hognose. A big pro for these guys compared to other snakes. A lot of people don't want to deal with a freezer full of large rats. For whatever reason, a freezer full of smaller mice, more palatable. There it is, palatable, acceptable. She's not gonna eat a big rat. Uh, she'll probably try based on how I've seen her at feeding time, but you know, just small little mice. Even uh, I heard people having success with feeding them reptilinks which is basically just like a little sausage made out of different proteins that reptiles eat. Um, I don't know, I'm not gonna confidently say that you can just feed them reptilinks and they'll live a long, healthy life, but uh, it doesn't seem like something bad to mix in there if you're a little sick of mice for a little while. From what I hear, these guys are primarily amphibian eaters in the wild. So, you know, they're not necessarily getting exactly what they eat anyway. So to mix it up with something like reptilinks, which has, again, proteins that reptiles will eat 
it doesn't seem like a terrible idea to mix it up. We might try that with Petunia in the future. Yeah, you're not dealing with big rats. That's a, that's a pro. I know I said there are some cons to handling them, but at the same time, they're really great for handling. What I said about how you have to support them at all times, you can view that as a con, or you can say, hey, well, it makes it more immersive, right? I have to focus more. You're spending more, I, well, I guess I don't know how quality it is for them, right? We're learning more about reptile emotions and what they like and dislike, but you know, you're doing it. You're actively handling them, which is, which is fun, right? You could, of course, actively handle a ball python, but sometimes they just want to wrap around your arm and just hang out, right? So you can't, you're not following with them. You're not doing various things that you might be doing with a Western hognose. Very active in the sense that they don't stop, but pretty slow right? So they're not darty, they're not getting away from you at any time, but they are still moving, which again helps with that immersiveness, and it makes it, it makes for a pretty entertaining handling session. Next comes to feeding, right? Where, as I said, these guys can be huffy, puffy little maniacs for those first few seconds before you get them out. Okay, if you found a burrow. These guys, where I guess I could have mentioned this as a con, they're going to be food aggressive not aggressive like they want to kill you right but definitely food motivated might, might be a better word so these guys will come at you come flying at the rodent uh, petunia has thrown herself from her tub multiple times at feeding time and i don't like anger i mean it's fun you know some people might not like it but it is fun it is entertaining to feed them where again i keep comparing them to ball pythons and corn snakes other great beginner snakes which it, it's fun when a ball python's just sniffing at it and then boom, that strike comes out of nowhere. Not really out of nowhere. They telegraph it. You know what's coming. These guys are just flailing. They just open their mouth wide open and they just say, feed it to me. So it is, it's pretty fun. It's pretty entertaining. She's probably my most entertaining snake to feed. So it's definitely another pro of the Western Hognose. And with that, we're going to finish up with a feeding video because uh, Petunia's hungry. When isn't she? Uh, before we get to it, I want to conclude the pros and cons section. Look, obviously they're amazing, right? Do your research, make sure your care is going to be good because the better your care is for them, the better that they're going to, you know, behave, interact with you, the happier they'll be. So in conclusion, those cons can go fly a kite and they're a great snake, really great snake. And so cute, so cute. Okay, Petunia wants you to enjoy this feeding video. Other than that, once again, guys, I'm Raph. This is Petunia. You've been watching Red Ribbon Reptiles. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and like this video. It's free. Helps me out a lot. Helps Petunia out a lot. And enjoy this feeding video. We'll see you next time.